um, you know, now we're facing this with transgender. Why, why do you think, you, you said this yourself, that it seems like there's a, almost a quicker transition, right. <laughs> can use that word, um, to acceptance and understanding. Why, why do you think, not to say that there are no problems either, right, right. of course, but, but why do you think that is? Well, I think you're right that it is a sort of uh, lawyerly thing to say that it's quick. From our perspective, it is quick uh, because we see how slowly uh, it is to uh, change in the legal system how to make major changes. And there are good reasons why we don't want herky-jerky changes in the law. Right. But um, the reason I think things are going more quickly, I think there are two primary reasons that occur to me. One is that the civil rights movement uh, for African Americans in this country did a lot of good work. Not just the work of saying, you know, African Americans deserve full equal citizenship and full integration into the society, but sort of finishing the sentence, saying that's true not only because of who we are, but because of what America is and what citizenship in America is about. It isn't about in-group, out-group, who your parents were, what you know, what you look like on a superficial level. It's about who you are more deeply and what you have to contribute. And if you, you know, sort of subscribe to the central values of our nation. And if you do, then, you know, you deserve equal status just like everybody else. That's what this is all about. That's the American project. And so, number one, I would say the work of the civil rights movement just created a, a cultural background against which we could move more quickly and that's something I, I hope people are very grateful for because a lot of sacrifices were made for that. And then the other reason is uh, actually there a huge setback. At the very beginning of the gay rights movement, when there were a few little footholds where a few people could be, maybe be out at work or maybe if they didn't talk about it, everybody could know and it would be okay and they could have their lives at night on, and on the weekends. And if somebody saw them in the village, they weren't necessarily going to report them to the boss. At that exact moment, when that was the only little foothold we had, AIDS came along. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, people were being treated like lepers. People were dying in the streets. People were being thrown out of hospitals. And uh, you know, you had a situation in which your significant other might die, and then his family would come in and evict you from your house because it was in his name, and they don't care about you. So horrible things were happening all of a sudden. And I think the things that were happening to our community were so bad that they shocked the conscience of a lot of Americans. And at the same time, the crisis was so deep that we had nothing to do except, like, unite, because it was an existential crisis. People were just dying. So because yep. of the severity of that crisis, we had to unite and we had to sort of plead for our lives, basically. And this, this was before me. I was a kid in the 80s, mm -hmm. so I remember seeing this, but I was just little. Um, but the work that was done by ACT UP and by a lot of other organizations yeah. at that time uh, made a huge difference. People just didn't want to see people dying in the streets and people being ripped away from their partners so that they could go into the hospital and not being able to visit their partner in the hospital. That's, that seems very shocking to people.